among perhaps some of the most bitterly ironic ironies of all time, the same type of people in the 1980s who were deeply concerned about marketing things to children product-wise are now perfectly cool with public schools marketing weird perversions and deviancy to their children, but alas. Here we are, and I was thinking about why exactly the Of course, everyone knows that the 80s were the best decade ever. There's a number of reasons why the 80s were so awesome. One of those was Ronald Reagan freeing up the market so that in the marketplace, cartoons could sell toys, could sell comic books, could sell lunchboxes. The whole media blitz for a product like that. Ironically, bitterly ironic, the same sort of people that were really mad about the idea of marketing this stuff to kids are now perfectly cool with public schools marketing to kids perversion and weirdness and sexual deviancy and genital mutilation and ser But there's probably no better example of how the free market drove something that ended up being so good and beneficial. I mean, think about this in a free market standpoint. Why, as a child, why would you not want to have toys of the show you love to watch? Why would you not want a show of the toys you like to play with? Why would you not want the lunchbox, the comic book? All of these things serve this purpose so that, yes, they are selling a product, but it was also the 1980s, and what they were selling us was far superior. Whether it was the Thundercats, Masters of the Universe, G.I. Joe, He-Man, all these great shows that we grew up with, they were actually teaching values. Good, decent, wholesome values. Yes, even before they were pressured into, you know, now you know, and knowing is half the battle. Even within the programming of the show, the natural setup was good versus evil, what was good, what was bad, what you were willing to sacrifice for the good. These were moral stories given to you on the television to enjoy, given you the toys so you could learn to exercise your own imagination and have your own adventures in this universe or Use them interchangeably with other universes. Star Wars, Star Trek, well, Star Trek did a sad deficiency in toys for most of its history. But the Star Wars figures and the G.I. Joe and the He-Man, all of those Transformers, GoBots, which we usually used as Transformers, but you were able to build in your imagination this heroic world that had the basic moral, decent principles and values that were universally known to every sane person in every epoch of history, except apparently the 21st century. And of course, as much as they hated, despised, squealed and like a pig and whined about it, the Marxist left knows that that's what was really going on in the 80s. They know that's what's going on when you're marketing a product with a good good and evil, proper morals, proper value storyline. Despite all their claims to the contrary back then, they knew that it was creating a better society of non-Marxist thinkers. This is what they were opposed to. They couldn't quite get the Marxist lessons that were in everything else, in adult entertainment, back to the first black and white movies. They couldn't quite work it into the cartoon in a way that really got through to kids a Marxist message. There was a little bit of it here and there, things they tried to slip in. But the cartoons had the basic moral structure. That's why these things still exist. As awful and horrible as the movie version of Transformers was, that's why they tried to bring it back. This is why the comic book stories from Marvel Comics, most of which were not cartoons in the 80s, have been translated to screen, and so they turned it to full Marxist woke and it went to, went to garbage. This is why G.I. Joe had this lasting power, but they haven't been able to come up with a good movie version or cinematic version of it. It's why Masters of the Universe drew all this attention until deceitful bait-and-switch lion Marxists swapped it out for a feminist Marxist intersectional message. The reason why they're bringing these things back is A, they have no creative ability of their own. Marxist evil can't create, only destroy, but B, it is their intention to destroy these things. They're fully aware that these 80s cartoons, these sort of sci-fi stories, these things are this modern mythos 
like the fables of ancient times, the myths of Greeks and Romans, like the, the tales of the medieval period, the old folk tales, even the early forms of urban legends, these are the things that build a moral fiber sort of story. It's a mythos for our lives. It gave us an idea of right and wrong to dream about, struggle for, imagine for when we were just children. And it just continues to be formative, which is why they count on people my age, taking their kids and their grandkids to see this stuff, but it's why they have to ruin it. And they're doing it with everything. Disney had to change up the message of, of Pinocchio, changing up the message of S Snow White. I anything that had a lasting moral message has to be twisted and perverted and confused because they're trying to destroy the very value system that these franchises were originally an outgrowth of. While Ronald Reagan's free market anti-communist era gave us this value system being spread large through this process, of course, Marxism has to destroy it the way that it has to destroy everything decent and civilized. So many American conservatives do not understand this. They ridicule the nerd culture, the comic book culture, the anime culture. They do not grasp this is the last stronghold of real conservative traditional values in the younger generation. People my age and younger who grew up with this stuff, it is the nerd culture. Video gaming culture is the last place where the SJWs have been pushing their way in. This is relatively recent. The people that come out of this nerd geekdom fandom culture, often ridiculed by mainstream society for a long time and especially conservatives, Oh, you're a troll that lives in your mother's basement. No, I'm not, actually. Putting down the very people that would be their supporters and their constituents because they don't understand the importance. The communists understand the importance. This is why they're so actively trying to destroy these things. As much as it may seem like, this, well, this is just entertainment. No, it's not. It is the cultural paradigm of an era of moral values, patriotic values, traditional values. There is no difference when you destroy the real history of a place and you destroy its mythological history. This is the same thing as tearing down statues of real heroes and desecrating their graves. When you twist Yoda, when you destroy Captain Kirk, when you make Luke Skywalker spineless, when you, when you literally cuck and emasculate and undermine all of the heroes of the past, you're doing it intentionally for that reason, to destroy that basic value system. And of course, people my age and a little younger and a little older are saying, no, this is garbage, to which they are just shrieking into the darkness of the night that we're ismarky obiists and evil, hateful, whatever, insert, made up, completely fictional Marxist word that they believe explains everything. But the two major points to note, free markets created this phenomenon in the 80s of being able to teach these moral lessons in such a way Marxists who now control the means of production of all of the entertainment, overwhelmingly the majority, are using it intentionally to destroy this narrative and change it up because they figured out too late that moral values being taught in it become this lasting bedrock for a healthy society. And the thing that cannot ever, that Marxism cannot ever live in is a healthy society.